Welcome back. It's time for Hot Takes. I'm your host, Savannah Gaida. The rules here are simple. I'll ask a question to our two anchors, and they will get in arguments with each other for your viewing pleasure. Let's start off with men's soccer, who currently hold a record of 5-9-1. to nine to one. Recently, they celebrated nine players, more than one-third of their current team, in their senior day game. Positions for next season need to be filled proactively, but the issue remains. How will the team's poor performance this season impact their recruiting for upcoming seasons? Parker, let's kick it off with you. Well, I don't think their poor performance this year is really going to help them later on in the future. Now, I understand there's a good young core that's established on the team right now, but I just think the seniors that we, we have right now, and we have a handful of juniors that are going to be continuing their career into senior year, they haven't been efficient, they haven't been doing too well, and it's against mediocre opponents. I mean, you look at the game against American, right? They tied an 0-6 team. The only tie that American had was against GW. There's been time and time again where poor performances have been shown. The, the coach hasn't been shown to really switch up the lineup as much. And so that might be concerning to recruits who, who are concerned that, they, hey, they're young. Are they going to get their time to shine? Is it going to be the same, so, uh, same set of players that we see time and time again uh, playing and I won't get my play time? I think there's a lot of concerns here that we need to address. And I just think that the, the taste in, in the recruiter's mouths the, the, from this season might not help them going forward. Later on, we might see, but I think for next year, it, it's going to be difficult to get people. Well, Parker, I, I definitely see where you're coming from. And you did bring up some good points. I will say, you know, like we mentioned before, there are some mediocre losses, like you pointed out. But there are some great freshmen who have definitely proven themselves this season. Um, like we mentioned before, Liam Emson and Kuklin. Um, both of them were some of the only scorers in the two games that they, they ended up, I think one was a loss and one was a win. But regardless, these are some of the only scorers in these games that, you know, they might end up being mediocre losses, like you said. But there's definitely a lot of potential there. And I think that um, in terms of recruiting, yes, there are only a few good freshman players now, but going forward, those freshman players are going to be the new faces of leadership on the team, and I definitely think you know we got to be optimistic, and hopefully, um, there's recruiters are going to be smart, and um, yeah, we're going to be losing so many um, key players this going into next year. So I definitely think that um, there's a lot of room for improvement, and we should stay optimistic. Great points, guys. Isabel, I love the optimism, but I'm gonna have to give this one to Parker. Unfortunately. The record here prevails, five to nine to one, and you're right, tying with American, they should have at least scored at least one goal in that game and won. And I also think that they need to establish those younger players and there should be more diversity in the lineup. Moving on to our next question. Last spring, Suzanne Danheim, a runner on the women's cross country team, finished fifth in the women's 5,000 meter run of the A-10 championship. She even beat her own personal record by shaving more than 30 seconds off her previous best time. Currently in her senior year, she's already been named A-10 Women's Performer of the Week due to her outstanding performance in the Princeton Invitational. What can we expect from her in the upcoming A-10 Championship? Isabel, the floor is yours. Well, Savannah, I think the answer here is simple. I mean, like you said, A-10 Runner of the Week broke her own personal record. I mean, come on, she's, she's bound for greatness. Um, and, you know, on a more personal note, Suzanne was actually the first person that I got to interview on Unstoppable ever. And I think she, not only is she a great athlete, she's a great person. And I think regardless of her running and her training, she continues to just put on this, this ray of positivity to everyone she encounters. And I think that's what anchors her when she's, when she's competing and when she's um, just living life. So I think that, you know, only, only good things ahead for Suzanne, and I'm really excited to see how she does for the remainder of the season. It's hard to disagree. Uh, I, I do have to agree on this one. I think anything aside from a top 10 finish at the 810 would be disappointing. Just considering her, her constant, she keeps getting better every year, right? She's constantly improving, and I think now is her prime, right? And so her work ethic is unlike anyone I've seen. She's now working with the men's cross country team. She's building up the rapport with them. She's being a leader on this team and it's her final year, right? And so when you're going that final year, you're going that final stretch for cross country. Now I know she's running track in, in the spring, but it's your last year running cross country. She's gonna leave it all out 
on the field. She's, she's going to do everything she can to get the top 10 finish. And like I said, anything past that I, I think is going to be a little bit disappointing. So I, I, I'm going <laughs> to harp on your note a little bit, but I think mainly it's because of her work ethic, her, her working with the men's cross country team, and just her as a leader. It's her final year. Uh, I, I think she's going to go out there and, and she's going to kill like she always has. Right, well, I'm glad you guys could almost finally agree on something. <laughs> Isabel, you got this one in the bag. Just because of your personal connection <laughs> and Suzanne being on Estavo before, Isabel, this one's yours. In true spooky season spirit, I want to hear your Halloween costume ideas and favorite trick-or-treat candy. Parker, let's start with you. All right, now uh, the segment's called Hot Take, so I have, a, I have a really big hot take here. Uh, favorite treat is actually, I, I'm really in the mood for a payday. I know that's it's 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 not going to be what people are expecting. It's not what people are you know normally vying for. But you know, there's nothing you know. Just it's caramel, peanut butter, salt. What you can go wrong with that? In terms of costumes, haven't decided yet. Well, think of something. Actually, funny enough, for a class, I have to think of something that's tech related, media related. So I think I'm going to go something along those lines potentially. You know, uh, but you know, I think for candy, you're looking at Kit Kats, you're looking at Snickers, but mainly. I'm going to go with Payday. All, All right. right, Parker. Well, <laughs> um, I'm just going to leave that Payday comment over there. Um, my favorite candy um, has been, always will be, Jolly Ranchers. Just they are amazing um, during all seasons, not just Halloween season. Um, so I'm just going to go with that. You can't go wrong with Jolly Ranchers. Um, in terms of Halloween costumes, though, however, I agree with you. I I still have no idea. I do know that I want to wear some sort of wig. Wigs are very trendy right now, especially pink ones. So I think I'm gonna incorporate a pink wig into my costume, but don't know exactly how it will come to fruition. <laughs> so stay tuned to see what my Halloween costume is. All right, guys. Well, unfortunately, I disagree with both of you. Oh. Hey, Day, Jolly Ranchers, really? <sighs> I'm going to give it to Isabel because Jolly Ranchers are way better than Payday. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. But my personal favorite would be a Snickers. You've seen the commercials. Eat a Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. I feel much better when I eat a Snickers. <laughs>